Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. Today I have this. It's an E scene. And you're thinking, what the heck is that? Well, I'm going to show you what it is. Ready? Have you guessed yet? No. It's a weird pouch. There's some weird holy things here. Hmm. We'll unzip this little area here. And inside we see some carabiners, a USB cable, and a little manual that if you were quick, you'd have seen what this said on it. But I whipped it away. So only the fastest of you will have caught this. And this was £29 off Amazon. And uh, just a quick note, look at that nice watertight zip there. There's a reason it's watertight too. I'll show you why. Ta-da! So this is a solar charger, a 10 watt solar charger. I'm going to have to zoom out a bit. And that's what it looks like. And the idea is you can keep this somewhere in your car. It's relatively flexible because I don't think it's got the same kind of thick glass. The cells certainly don't look like they've got that same thick glass that you normally used to see on things. And it does, as I say, have this uh, waterproof pouch. And the idea is you would put inside here your power bank, but I don't have a power bank on me. But I've got a phone and you'd plug your phone in and again my phone might be a bit tricky because of ah I've got the wrong type of plug curse you so after you get the right kind of plug for your phone you don't need a long wire by the way if you've got one of these don't get a massive long wire unless you kind of I don't know it depends if you want to leave it here to charge or leave it tethered but the idea is you plug that in there and you plug that into your phone and you're going to loop this all up, basically, and depending on the size of your phone. Hopefully you won't have too much wire. You will be able to zip that in there nice and secure, because this is like for an emergency thing. But a power bank is a good option too, of course. And then you put that in the sunlight, in the moonlight, and then you're going to check if it's charging. And it's saying to me, no charging. And of course it's going to say no charging, because we're using it indoors with LED um, lighting. Now, that aside, let's assume for a moment it will charge. And I'm going to go test that at some point. It's raining today. Even in overcast UK, I'm hoping to get a few watts of power into this thing. But let's look at the manual. It's a 10 watt Ikeen Ikeen solar charger. And there is a uh, barcode thing. I don't know what you call those. QR codes. So there's some QR codes. I don't know. It works if you get two side by side. It probably just confuses everything. Let's have a look at the instructions, see if we can follow along. It seems pretty uh, self-explanatory. Foldable solar charger, collects power from the sun, converts it into electricity. That's it. Uh, solar panel, 5.5 volts, 10 watts. USB output, 5 volts, 1.5 amps maximum. So sort of implication that there might be a regulation in there going on. So it shows you your folding size and your opening size and your unit weight, but it's pretty light. I guess that's... Um, what uh, how I'd describe it saying here is the sol foldable solar charger waterproof the folding solar charger is weather resistance oh yeah I mean it's made of material after all it's not going to be massively waterproof uh, so be careful I wouldn't like leave my phone submerged in it uh, what else are they saying blah 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 generally speaking for 10 watt solar charger under clear sunny days charge an iPhone 6 about two to three hours so you've got a little bit of a long time to wait because you'd have to check. I don't have a thing to hand, or do I? Right, so this, for example, is a regular sol uh, USB box that spits out USB powers. And this is saying its uh, output is actually 5 volts at 10 amps max. Hmm. I don't know. At 5 volts at 10 amps, that's sort of implying it's the same as this thing. But I, I I, would have to think that this would only do that if you're in the middle of California or something in the middle of a desert. Your mileage is definitely going to uh, vary. It says, can I charge my devices in a cloudy day? Yes. It says you can. But the charging efficiency will be lower down and charging will be prolonged. I mean, look. I used to get these for my car with the 12 volts thing and leave them on the dash and they're plugged into the lighter socket. Um, they did some kind of work. I think we did get some sort of trickle charge going. If you're in a, a sunny place, then I'm pretty sure you're going to get some mileage out of this. 
Uh, I'm going to go outside. I feel unless I take it outside and I see some charge going in my phone, I can't say it kind of works. So I'm going to go see if it kind of works. And until we have a super bright sunny day, I can't really confirm either way. So your mileage may vary. Now, before I just go outside, though, just to let you know, though, all of this is really nice. The actual quality of the zips, the material here. Look, it's even got two zips on there. It's like, I don't know why they've done that. It's almost like you could kind of keep something in there. I'd be cautious too because you might damage the cells but there probably is enough room to let's see if could you actually keep you could easily keep a phone in there or a, a very slim power bank um, but I think you'd be better off putting it in there. Um, and as I mentioned before it does seem to have this nice kind of waterproofy type zipper that you get like on a you know you get a nice fancy jacket. In terms of the carabiners that's a weird setup but I'm, I'm guessing it's just so you could t lash to it, you know, like bungees or however you're going to put this on your, uh, wherever you're hanging it up. But I kind of like the idea of this on a, you know, like on a campsite or a caravan or something where, you know, you've parked up, you've got it sitting there. You can literally just pop this on the roof, can't you? And uh, while you're away, it could just be trickling into a, a small power bank because you don't really need necessarily a massive power bank. And then when you get back from your day's hike or whatever, at least you can just shunt some power into your phone. Right, I'm going to go outside and just confirm I see a charging light. Result. So, I uh, took it outside at the back of the house where the sun is not quite... Sh the sh sun's shining from the front of the house. Uh, but I went out the back of the house because it's totally overclassed with, overclassed, <laughs> overclassed with cloud. And... Um, didn't do nothing, didn't do nothing, not one bit. Took it to the front of the house, again though, where it's all overcast and it looks exactly the same. Charge light comes on, bang! Uh, and that's where the sun would be normally shining at this time of the day. So yeah, it definitely works. It's a little bit like magic actually, like the lightning bolt goes out, lightning bolt comes on. Like, so <laughs> I can't uh, really comment on the efficacy of this in the UK in the overcast weather. I think you're gonna have trouble with it, to be honest with you, but it depends on the device. Modern big old fat smartphone, gonna be hard work, but then maybe uh, trickle charging a Game Boy, yeah, no problem. So yeah, I, I'd love to hear from you if you've got one of these or similar and you live in somewhere hot. I uh, know for a fact in the place like the Middle East, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, California, any of those regions where it's just, ooh, oh, it's beeping, it's beeping, it's, it's complaining, um, where you've got deserty type conditions or really bright sun, you know, just be fair, even in the UK or you know, Europe where you've got a good sunny, sunny day, I think you're going to get some decent output out of this. So it might be nice if you're just on a hike or something to bring it with you or camping. It really isn't that heavy. It's just 300 grams. I don't know if it is or not, but I'd say it's about the weight of a maybe a book or something. It's not... It feels about the same weight as my phone, if anything. It's just kind of similar. Let's put it that way. I don't know if I can make... Oh, can we make a uh, way of measuring this? This is where it all gets a bit uh, crazy and things will just stop working. So if we have this digi key ruler, can we make a weighing thing? A scales. I suspect we can't. But So if the digi key Lego is kind of in the middle, let's see if we can do that because it's a 35 centimeter ruler. So it's 15.25. So yeah, the digi key logo is more or less in the middle. Right, ready? Three, two, one. Yeah, it's a bit heavier, <laughs> but not. I don't know if it. It's uh, you could you could measure it in centimeters. How many heavy? How, how many heaviers it is? Actually, that's quite cool. I wonder how you could convert linear measurement to to weight. You could do this quite easily. It should be a good A level question, really. It uh, becomes level. At around, it's looking like 11 centimeters. So mathematicians at home can work that out. Right, <laughs> I hope that's some use to you. Let me know how you get on with these solar type chargers. As ever, thank you for watching. <laughs>